Now, Mason, Dr. Sleep filmmaker Mike Flanagan has pitched a feature version of Clayface over at the studio. Wait, what does this mean? Uh, several sources have told Deadline. However, no word on green light yet, and the studio have, but the studio has not said no. Uh, Mike Flanagan has come out and said, Ari Clayface, the news today is entirely speculative. When or if something like that ever becomes real, I promise I'll tell you guys, smiley face. So there's that element of the Clayface story. Uh-huh, but is uh-huh. there not a second element, Mason? Oh, uh, maybe he's in the Batman. Maybe he's in the Batman. Maybe he's in the movie. Well, not the, the Batman. Batman because that movie already came out. I mean, oh, he the, can be anybody. So that's maybe true. Maybe he was in the Batman the whole time. Exactly. Oh, but he might be in the Batman part two. Yeah, that's exciting. So apparently, this pitch from Mike Flanagan, if it's real, wasn't pitched as part of the Batman two, which he also might be appearing in separately. And other sources are saying that. The script is constantly changing and that Clayface is a big addition to Matt Reeves' as The Batman 2. So we don't know whether or not either of these things are true and if they are true, whether they are connected. And also, if any of this is true, what version of Clayface is this? I mean, that's that's our realm of rampant speculation. Here we go. So, I mean, the the one that people probably know that is probably most prominent is the one that's in Harley Quinn, the animated series, if I had to guess. Um, It was a sort of... He's a, a sort of a very theatrical kind of, uh, mm. uh, but but he's you know he's 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 got you know sci-fi clay powers. Yeah. But there's in the comic books there's been a bunch of different clay faces, and so the question becomes: Is Matt Reeves's Batman universe going to become yeah kind of supernatural or sci-fi fantasy, or is he going to be a more of a mundane clay face? So the first yeah. clay face initially was just a man named Basil Carlo who was like a over the hill actor Mm -hmm. who wore a sort of clay-like mask and committed a bunch of murders. And then subsequent... He could be anybody to an extent. Yeah, and subsequent clay faces have had shape-shifting powers and and sort of... The, the the second one could you know become this this clay creature who could replicate anybody's features and you couldn't kill him because you know bullets and what have you would just pass through his clay like body. He's also and, in the Batman animated series. There's a yes, that's there's right. One really great episode yeah. where he appears. There's, yeah, I'm sure there are others. But. And there's a there's a lady version of Clayface who can not only transform into anyone but gain their powers if they have powers. Uh, and then Basil Carlo gained Clayface powers. He gained a combination of the the, the the next two Clayface's powers. Yep. And there's a guy who has like like a lava touch and he has to wear like a container suit. I've got suit. the lava the touch. Everything, Everything I, I touch, it turns, turns to lava. Exactly. Ding. Yeah, that's the one. Uh, so is it one of those or is it a, an, an alternate option? Or none. Is he a guy who maybe he's got like, maybe he doesn't turn to clay specifically, but maybe he has like malle- a malleable face. Yeah. That kind of thing. Like he's not, he's not going to fight like a big clay monster like we saw in like the Arkham games. Yeah, or... yeah, but maybe he can. And, you know, obviously there's, um there is uh, in the in the comic books, there's a character called Hush mm. who has, sur- in, in uh, he's surgically altered himself to look like Bruce Wayne. Yeah. So maybe it could be a combination of those two. Maybe, you know, maybe yeah. he's fine a version of himself. Maybe it's – because it, I think it would also be too early to introduce a character like Hush. Yes. Because there's a lot of backstory to that and, character. And Bruce Wayne has to become more of kind of like a socialite kind yes. of because that factors into the story and he's not quite mm. there yet, this particular version. What would your guess be in terms of what this – I Look, I mean, it looks like a more gritty, realistic kind of the Dark Knight-esque kind of mm. world. So like, I'm thinking like it will lean towards that. But yes. I think there was a similar thing with Batman Begins. There was a time before that second movie came out where we didn't really know what direction these movies were going to go in. It was yeah. such early days Batman and there was like hallucinogen gas and all this kind of things where it could have potentially blown out into a big sci-fi world. Yeah. And I think we're in the same position here. I kind of want the clay, gross clay man. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh I don't know though. What do you think? I think I'm gonna I'm gonna guess very malleable man. Mm. I'm gonna guess like I'm. It's very malleable man. <laughs> That's right. Look how malleable he is. <laughs> yes. Give me your money, or I'll become more malleable than you can possibly imagine. <laughs> I think it's gonna be probably. Okay, here's my guess. It's Basil Carlo. He's some sort of actor at the end of his career or something Theater like. He's a nerd, and he maybe. He, Maybe he gains. Maybe he's he's had this ability, or maybe he gains an ability to. He wants to become more youthful, and it's kind of a. But then it turns out he can push his. Oh my faith. god! It's, it's the opposite of the movie Catwoman, where you want to become more. That's youthful, right. But you turn yeah, yeah. into a porcelain person. That's right. I think he's going to be. He's he's going to be a 
Yeah, just like a sort of like shape clicking. Shift. Yeah, like you can move the bones and, and flesh in his face and that sort of stuff. That's cool. It is cool. And he'll have a big knife. Yeah, mm. and a, seri- a series of wigs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. Mm. All right, cool. Yeah. Well, I don't disagree. Because I think if he's just a guy in a mask, that's just the Riddler again. Because I know they've also talked about, and maybe it's just more rumour, that maybe they'll do like a Mr. Freeze or whatever. Mm. And But Mr. Freeze is, again, it's like a level below in terms of like a weird clay man. Yeah. You know, like you could be like, I don't know, he's got a cryo disease and he has to be in a suit. Yeah. It's not as... I think this universe is is sort of more heightened than the, the uh, Nolan. Definitely. Batman. So I yeah. think if any of these universes are going to have a more sci-fi bent to them. Yeah. I even, like I, I, I've said before, I think there was the capacity for there to be a Superman in the Nolan universe, just like a golden age. Definitely. Superman. And I think they could probably do it in this as well. I think they even looked into that. I think the idea was initially that they went to Christian and Bale and it was like, no, I don't, no, no, no. <laughs> Didn't I break my knee in that movie or something? Mm, yeah, no. yeah. I, I don't care if I fixed it. I don't want to do it. I've got enough money and I already made a Terminator movie. That's true. Yeah. Hey, here's one bit of news, James. Oh, my God, for this show? Yeah, for this show. Let's go. It'll just be you and your life. All right. I'm saving that for later. Um, so... Quentin Tarantino, we mentioned last uh, mm. in weeks past, he had he's got a movie coming out called The Movie Critic, and and you know he's got a sort of a, a present day love affair with old Hollywood, nineteen sixties Hollywood, etc. And so they're like, okay, who's a prominent movie critic? It could be about it could be about uh, Pauline Kael. Oh yeah. But yes. it turns out it's not. He's he's confirmed it's not about Pauline. Oh, who's Kael. it about? He hasn't said. Is it about? It's about the us. nostalgia critic. That's right. That's oh, right. God. That's right. He's going to blow the budget on t-shirts and ties. <laughs> um, <laughs> But it's 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 not about Pauline Kael, but the one piece of news here that I thought was interesting is it's set in 1977. What came out in 1977, James? Drugs. Yeah, drugs. <laughs> it's just going to be about drugs. That was the introduction of drugs, wasn't that's it? That's right. The first drugs came out Yeah, then. that's yeah. cool. Uh, that's well, Quaaludes. So is this a shot at Star Wars? I think it might and, be a shot at... And the blockbuster era I of I think it might making? be, yeah. Well, he has had run-ins with That's what I'm saying. Disney, yeah. yeah. Did we, t- we talked about this it's last very, week. Like, it's not like you went, oh, it's set in the 70s, I guess, or whatever. But yeah. it's 1977, <laughs> very, very pointedly, mm. I think. I think, it's, I think this is going to be a shot at Star Wars and the blockbuster industry. But I also and, think it's interesting because he... From memory, he likes Star Wars because Star Wars, original Star Wars, Star Wars 1. Yeah, yeah. Uh, working title was Blue Harvest. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, go on. Like that movie, I mean, I know it was the biggest movie of the time it became that, but it was this really weird, underground, unusual movie. That's true. That happened to become the biggest franchise in the world. Yeah. So I think he, from that perspective, he liked it. But uh-huh. then in, ter- in terms of like what it has become now, yeah. he obviously does not because they're Disney are pushing his movie off cinema screens. And pushing every movie off cinema screens. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, well, that is very interesting. I did not know that. I think I think that's what it's going to be. So, Should they get the critic uh, from that animated show, The Critic, whatever his name is? Yeah. <laughs> What's his name again? Well, it's John Lovitz. Yeah. But it the... stinks. Yeah, it stinks. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah, get... or, uh, yeah, I mean... I... Do you think it's going to be like a fictional critic, do you? Or like an amalgamation of... I think it might be. Do you yeah. think he's going to run into the theatre and machine gun George Lucas? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> like the end of Inglorious Bever? Or he gets machine gunned, you know? Sure, yeah. 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 Well, I'm interested to see how that's going to turn out. What if it's what if his, it's, his, the character's named Siskel Ebert? <laughs> he's, just a, he's just a mutated amalgamation of those two. Oh, I love that. 